Hey guys, welcome back to episode three of The Chew. This is Rob. What's up? You might as well give him your trademark. I had so many requests this week. There's this trademark right there. You remember our game from last week? I'm Dave. Um, thank you for spending your Friday night with us. I look yes, forward to this much. day every week. It's my favorite day of the week. Oh yeah, it's awesome. You know, there's nothing like getting done with work and going into the weekend. And you just want something to relax. You can watch with your family or your girlfriend or your kids. And this is the perfect kind of show for that. Oh, absolutely. Just to kind of unwind so, for the absolutely. weekend. Absolutely. Um, you know, we do have some seri- more serious no- uh, news to kind of go that, over that here. That is right, Dave. How are you doing? You had a health scare earlier this week. You know, it was a long week. It was a long week. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am a salmonella survivor. Um, unbeknownst to me, thank goodness for our medical team, which is the best in the business, I think. I think Absolute we a great best. medical team. I mean, they're working on, well, commission basically, which is nothing because we can't pay them because of certain contracts we've given out in the last couple of weeks, but we won't get into that right now. Unfortunately. Um, but unbeknownst to me, but our medical team made me realize that for a good two weeks, I was eating salmonella laced granola bars. Okay. Now... Imagine my surprise. I'm sitting at home watching a sporting event on the weekend, and I'm eating a granola bar, and I'm I'm scrolling through social media, right, like anybody would, just kind of chilling, relaxing, unwinding for the weekend. And I'm scrolling through social media, eating that granola bar, and I come across a local news station's post. And it just so happens to be on a salmonella outbreak in a certain granola company. E- and guess what I was eating at the time? That exact same kind of bar. And so immediately, immediately, I called 911. Okay? And they said, do you have your own medical team on staff? I said, yes, we do, because we think ahead on this company. Always you know got to think I mean? two steps ahead. Always got to think five steps ahead. Absolutely. And I said, I'll call them instead. So I saved, you know, the medical team at the police station. I saved them a lot of time. Let alone saving a lot of money on that. Uh, and saved a ambulance. lot of lives. And so I, I went through and I called their medical team. They came over within 45 seconds. They were at my house. And they said, That's sir. That's be a world record. They said, sir, do you realize that you've been eating salmonella lace granola bars for the better part of two weeks? What did you say, Dave? I said, no. I said, no. And then, you know what? I don't know what they said after that. What did they say, Dave? They said, you have to take three to four weeks off. I said, uh-uh. No way. That's my boy. I knew I, I, knew, said, I knew. you couldn't sit down for another alone a day. Any lesser man would have probably been off two to three months. But you're not a lesser man, Dave. No. There's, there's two things that were on my mind. You want to know what they were? What were they, Dave? Number one, I said, I have a company to run. Okay? You can't take nights off. You can't take days off. You can't take weeks off. Three to four weeks. I said, no way. Oh, no, man. We're getting this train going, man. Yeah, the train's just running. We're getting so much positive feedback. I'm not taking a day off. No way. So I said, nah, I said, I'll be on the chew this Friday night, seven o'clock central. And here I am. My man. I show up to play. My man. The second thing I wanted to talk about, it was just on my mind and I could not get rid of it. I need to know about this producer that you hired. I need to know more because I don't know anything about the guy. All you know, I know, I'm the one writing the checks. <laughs> They're bouncing some of them, but I'm the one writing the checks. My name's on the checks, right? I don't know who we're hiring. I don't know who we're giving these checks to. So, Mr. Producer, are you are you here today? Yeah, I decided to come in today. Oh, I appreciate that. So, I got. Can I ask you a question? Do we have time for that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, for, according to what I understand, what Robert told me last week is that he hired you. You graduated from Georgia Tech University. That might not necessarily be true, but That's a I was big surprise on their campus the day he saw me. You mm-hmm. said you graduated from Georgia Tech. What were you doing on the campus? Just out of, just out of wild curiosity, because I had nothing better going on this week than you know trying to survive. I was just kind of hanging out, you know. I really didn't. I was How many classes have you taken there? Semesters? None. Yeah, I couldn't get past admissions. So dare I ask? <laughs> might as well at this point. It's a little bit too late to not ask. Uh, what exactly were you doing there then? Yeah, just kind of hanging out, you know, just looking around. Uh, I'm like a cook at Burger King in my free time. You know? <laughs> Have it your way. You know what I mean? Have it your way. <laughs> I'll get to the pay next week because I'm almost scared to ask at this point. We're so far in debt on this company that... um. 
sorry if I didn't have enough to deal with on my own this week, just trying to get by day by day. But um, um, we'll get into that next week. We'll save something for next week on that. But I just want to say I appreciate your hiring practices for this company and, and kind of where you're putting us. Um, um, in my defense, he was standing by a, a stand that said uh, producers just need experience. So I... Just assumed. It, just assume, you know, he looks the part, man. He looks like our... Uh, you don't think his uh, Burger King shirt gave it away at all? I would imagine he's probably wearing his work shirt. You know, but, uh, he could have been doing a commercial for Burger King, bro. Okay. All right. Working, well, at the, working at the BK Lounge. Why don't we move on to something that maybe means something? You know, he look, man, look at him. He looks like our Peter Jackson, man. Oh, yeah. Why don't we, why don't we move on to something like uh, that you might know something about? Because obviously hiring is not your strong suit. Not, you know. <laughs> Um, let's talk about your little rant. I was on Facebook over the weekend while I was basically on my deathbed. And the first thing I came to, um, uh, on our bubblegum sports Facebook page is you had a, some kind of rant after the bears game. You care to share kind of what the game was about, how you were feeling those emotions, share some of that with us. Well, you know, going into this week, you know, after the bears won two games back to back that, um, you were talking pretty high on the show last week, if I remember well, I, you were too. If your team, you know, you see an improvement, and you know what, now you're in the hunt, and then you take a, you go, <laughs> go to toe with a pretty good AFC team in the Cleveland Browns, and leading for most of that game. If they not, were leading for most of the game when I was sitting there watching tape. I was like, Rob would have been pretty happy up until I, I, the fourth quarter. I was happy up until the fourth quarter. You guys let. So let's just summarize the game, and then I'll let you get into it. You let a 86 year old Joe Flacco. Go up and down the field in the fourth quarter, um, with a couple big plays to Cooper and Najoku. Is do I have any of that wrong, or is that pretty much right so far? That is a hundred percent accurate, Dave. Joe Flacco has been collecting social security for fifteen years. Okay, sure feels and like you it. guys let him. You guys let him go up and down the field in the fourth quarter. If you were playing two hand touch, they would have come back still in the fourth quarter. Anything wrong yet with that? I'm going to be honest. If they played two-hand touch, it would have been a lot worse. So why don't you give us a quick rundown of the game for those? Because we have a lot of uh, other teams' fans here that are in our listening audience. So why don't you give them a quick rundown of the Bears game since you went on that big rant that was very popular this weekend. So, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so the big rundown is that the Bears' defense, Montez Sweat, I like to call it the Montez Sweat effect. You know, this defense was playing all right until they got him. And then they, they kind of just took off the last month and a half you want to know what i'm most impressed with with him what, what are he is leading not just the bears and sacks he's leading the i almost said the r word he's leading the washington commanders in sacks as well i it? i can't remember the last time one player led both two different teams in sacks at this point in the season can you not let alone not this season but ever ever no one's have ever done that yeah which is crazy man that guy is a freak of nature it's it's just crazy how much he elevates everybody's play. It's mind-boggling, you know. Only if a team up in Green Bay would have a guy like that, maybe they'll be halfway decent. But um, We'll be getting to that, by the way, so stay tuned. So I would say, other than that, the defense I thought played very well up into that fourth quarter. They played lights out. You know, it's probably up until that, they played probably the best defensive football up until that point all year. But I was really disappointed in how the offense played. Because if you look at that game, the Bears scored 17 points. And the Bears offense only scored seven of that. <laughs> you know what I noticed when I was watching tape? It seemed like there was a lot of third and long. So Actually, there weren't really a lot of third. Well, there was some. It was, I would say it was about 50-50. Yeah. But when they were in third and short, they would take. Go a nine route. Why would you go a nine route when you need to pick up well, two that, or three yards? Well, that's my biggest thing is, so they, they, they did get some sh uh, third and shorts, but they're early in the game and late in the game, there was a lot of third and longs. I feel like if it wasn't Justin Fields scrambling around making a play, they ended up getting a lot of 38, third and nines, and then they just threw a deep ball. Right. There wasn't, there didn't seem to be a lot of consistent short I, timing routes. I would say the play calling was horrible, but that's how it's kind of been all year with Luke Getzey. Like, this, I don't, you know. That's another guy that came out of Green Bay. You gonna be okay? Seems I don't like know. You're starting to go back I, into Sunday morning. You, make, you know, I'm I'm kind of having. A little, I'm worried about him more than my own health scare. <laughs> kind of having a little Vietnam flashbacks right now, but uh, it was a tough time for everybody. You know, it's just 
it's just the more I go and was watching the game film this game after watching it the first time, it's just there was a lot of drops, at least four drops that I counted in big situations, especially early in the game. We had uh, Robert Tunyon down the field. Justin Fields hit him right in the hands. Right and in dropped stride, him. yeah. Would have walked right in. So, and you, you know, you can't take away from the Browns. You know, they're 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 Super Bowl caliber defense. You know, Miles Garrett's got those boys playing, mm-hmm. and you know, it's just. And, and that's the thing is Joe Flacco threw a couple balls that I mean you would expect someone that's been sitting on the couch for twelve weeks would throw, and he's right. he is up there in age. He's been out of the league for well, really not really doing much for like a few years now, I would say. But he also doesn't make a lot of stupid mistakes in no, crucial situations. He, he, I think that's even with him, like just him having a, you know, because he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. You know, he when he won that Superman, he was playing the best football you could probably think of ever. Mm-hmm. And then you know he's kind of replacing Deshaun Watson. Well, if Desha- <laughs> if Deshaun, Deshaun if Deshaun Watson was making plays like this for the Browns, maybe he would still be on the field. I would say so. So, but yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> Next week's a new week, man. That's what I love about Friday nights. It kind of is, it's our transition into the weekend, the next week's games. Next week's games, there's three of them left. Now, to bounce off the Bears game, the complete opposite will be the Green Bay Packers. And I'm sure this gave you a little bit of pleasure to know that you weren't alone this weekend. Yeah, that was the cherry on top of the, this week. A after, bit of, after, after the little drama I had, you know what? And then you get good news like this. <laughs> now look how happy is all of a sudden. Guys, guys and girls. If you remember me looking straight into the camera last week, what did I say, Rob? Do you remember? I looked just like this. I said, get that camera right here. Right it's in the center. Get me right in the center of the camera. And what did I predict? You predicted, you predicted the Packers would lose this week. I said the Packers would lose. I just saw too many inconsistencies and things that I just thought that would make that a tough game for them. And you hit the nail right on the head, Dave. Right on the head. Um, do you have any takeaways from the game? Because I know I have a bunch of stuff I want to get into. Um, when I was watching game film in that game, and you know, this game was going on the same in the Bears game, so I had to rewatch it. But I saw a lot of stuff that we talked about last week that popped up again. But it was mostly on the defense side of the ball. The defense, you know, like we, t- we talked about last week, that team having like first round picks off- on top of first round picks. And it's just like, they could not stop anything. Yeah, I was in a. We have a group chat um, with some some guys we play some sports with, and um, they were just having a complete meltdown about the game. <laughs> they about were Joe Barry and this or that. We got to fire Joe Barry, which it doesn't seem like he has things firing in all cylinders. But at some point, you also have to take some um, some issue with the players themselves because absolutely. absolutely. How, do, how do you need to be told to put pressure on the quarterback? And that's surprising because I was looking at it. I was like, they're like middle of the pack of second to quarterback. I was no, like, what do they have? I think they had like four sacks or so this week. So something like that. Yeah. The sacks weren't too bad. It was just it, there was not consistent pressure. Um, my biggest things that I saw, there is no pressure in the running game. They're not they're getting pushed back on the line of scrimmage on run defense. And the gaping holes I see in the secondary are just incredible. I'm like, a, I was astonished when I was sitting there watching the game. It, it was. There's it was holes crazy. all over the field. It was like, I thought I was watching the Raiders Chargers game all over again. They In the fourth quarter, they took a five yard curl route and they took it 50 yards to the house. A five yard curl route. That should never happen. That should never, ever happen. It's not like somebody blowing coverage and being like, oh, I, you know, we just made a mistake. I thought you had that guy. A five-yard curl route with two or three defenders behind you, and they could not stop him. And that's just fundamentals. Fundamentals. Tackling. Tackling. Use your arms. You know, a lot of these guys like to use their shoulders, which I don't know why. You know. I can tell you why, because they're soft. <laughs> well, that's why That's why they're in Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> He's just He just keeps poking. Um, guys, I just want to tell you right now, I don't take victory laps here when I'm right, which is most of the time on my predictions. Um, if you tuned in last weekend, last Friday night at 7 p.m. Central, I told you exactly what was going to happen. I even came up with a video after the game. I just wanted people to know this isn't a victory lap. But you know what also this isn't? This isn't a hobby for us. We put the work in all week. We watched game tape. I told you it was going to happen. So all the meltdowns I saw on social media in our group chats, I didn't understand them. 
All you had to do was tune in here at 7 o'clock Central Friday night, and your weekend would have gone by a lot easier. You wouldn't have been as upset. You could have just chilled. You would have been like, you know, Dave, that Dave guy from the Chew, he told us what to expect. I don't have to freak out this week, and I know my team's going to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, but they didn't. They didn't, and I and I actually picked them to win because I figured, well, they had. Uh, I want to really. I'll call it. It was a meltdown on Monday night against the Giants. You know, I was like, well, maybe this is a wake up call. You know, three weeks left to go. You know, they're at home. It's kind of a reju- re jump start. No, <laughs> it was actually worse than the Monday night game, to be honest with you. But it, but Jordan Love actually didn't play too bad. I was just gonna say there was a time in the third quarter that he looked exceptional. So it's not all negative. Yeah. He looked exceptional. There was about six minutes left in the third quarter, and he made it, I think it was 9 of 10 for 85 yards in the third quarter, which is just astounding because they weren't easy throws. No, they were. That put touchdown right on he money. made, it was about six minutes left on the run to his dead right in like double coverage in the end zone was amazing. It was exceptional. There's really no other way to say it. Yeah, like, you know, I was really impressed. With Jordan Love this game. This was the Jordan Love I thought was in that three-game stretch where they were just – he was playing lights-out football. But that defense <laughs> let him down again. Now, how many points did they end up scoring? It wasn't – I think I, it was like 20 or something like that. I think that. they ended up scoring 20, 24. It wasn't an exceptional amount no. of points. So there's a – along with um, Jordan Love playing really, really good, there's a couple things where I think – we left a little meat on the bone during the game because we're gonna yeah. give you. That's the thing about this show is you're not gonna get. You're not. We're not gonna fluff stuff up for you just so you feel good for the weekend. We're gonna give you straight facts, and then you can either agree with us or not agree with us. But we're gonna put the work in and shoot straight to you guys. That's what's special about this show. Um, so there's a fourth and two early in the game. They had like a first down at like the five yard line. I don't know if you remember that play, and they get to a fourth and two. And there was a little out route uh, left side of the end zone, and they missed that play. You cannot, you cannot leave points on the board. No. When you're like first and five, that early in the game, you either no. take the points or you better be damn sure you can put that ball in the end zone. That right. was embarrassing. You, that can't happen. No. A team that wants to go to the playoffs, that would not happen. Absolutely embarrassing. No, you can't. You got to finish. You got to finish. It, it goes back to how they played all year. You have to finish games, and. You know, you could, you know, this is what week going into week 16. This was, so this was like week 15. You know, at this point, you, you know, Jordan Love's shown that he can play in this league. So he, at, he has been better than I thought. When I went back and watched tape, he actually made less mistakes. He made one or two, but every, no one's going to be perfect. No. He had a better game than I thought. I, yeah. Just by watching highlights before I actually dove in and did the research. So, you know, but you got to score more than 20 points. And I'm telling you, drives like that first one, or not the first one, but it was very early in the game, you can't come away with zero points there. No, not at all. You got to at least put three, at the very least, put three, especially early in the game, because, you know, to really about the midpoint in the game, going into halftime and probably coming out of halftime is where you feel how this game is going to go. So, so that's a good point. Like early in the game, they kind of had that one mistake where you had, you came away with zero, which can happen. Late in the game, I noticed there was still plenty of time left, and there was just a lot of like five to seven step drops. It was deep pass, deep drop back, deep drop back, deep drop back. What happened to Aaron Jones? Because the Aaron Jones I saw in the first corner and that offensive line was dominant. Dominant. They were pushing guys all over the field. There was holes everywhere. Yeah, and you know what? And that's very good because I saw that too, you know. Like I said last week, if they could get explosion plays back, which they did with Aaron Jones this week. You got to stick with the run. You you get stopped short on one run. You can't abandon the run. The no. Green Bay Packers just don't stick with the run. They have Aaron Jones. No. And you saw how much more effective uh, Jordan Love was because those runs Jones was making was not the runs that Dylan was making. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah two completely different yeah, players. Yeah, because you had Jones. For two rushes, I think he had like almost 30 yards rushing. You know, and that's not including what he did receive. And I think he did got like a grand total of 20 receiving, like 40 rushing or something. But, you know, and it's just they need they they need to use their expo- playmakers more. And they don't for yeah. some reason. Or they get away from it. Like, uh, I don't know if I mentioned him. I don't think I did. But Jaden Reed, we mentioned him last week. Whew. That guy keeps getting better week after week. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, he just jumps off the screen. So, I mean... 
no matter what happens the rest of this year, next year, I think Green Bay has got a bright future if they spend their money well and, and draft good enough. Because their offensive line is really, really good. I don't think Packer fans under... I know we mentioned it last week. But yeah. on tape, you guys are just shoving people all over the field. And you have some explosive playmakers that are just developing. So I think the future could be bright. It, oh, oh, yeah. Could be bright for sure. You know, Which will give us more meltdown videos on our Facebook page. So, <laughs> um, but, yeah, like you got with these guys, but you got to keep developing. You can't just hope these guys are going to take the next level. You know, you got to make sure these guys are putting in work to develop. Speaking of developing, have you still been working with our young intern, Alex? Yes. Because I didn't have as much time to check in this week because obviously I was basically on my deathbed. Basically yeah. on my deathbed. Yeah, you had your health scare. I had my health scare. It's unbelievable that I'm sitting here right now. I can't even believe it myself and no, it's me. This, you know what no, I mean? No, the man I see in front of me is the man that played on a tour in ACL for two years, folks. All right. No lies being told here. No lies. But anyways, did you work with him more this week? Do you know what he has planned? Well, I I know we we worked on his, uh, what, what do you call his uh, breaking and entering. We worked on that, not to do that ever Which again. Which costs us some more money, just not for nothing. That costs us a little bit of dough, too. So we're actually down just, like a uh, fact, people, this country is built on debt. So uh, once we get this train going, debt will be paid. All right. So do you know what he's got got planned for us this weekend? And it's funny. The first thing you talked about was the Sal Miller outbreak with Quakers. It's been hard on my life, actually. Yeah. Well, he was just bringing out a special about that this week, Dave. Well, let's see it. Shoot All right, it Alex. Him. Tell us what you got. Good evening, folks. Or is it? Because we might just be in the midst of a salmonella outbreak. It seems that a popular granola company may have traces of salmonella within their bars. But we here, the hardworking folk at Bubblegum Sports, we're digging a little deeper to see exactly what we can find inside these bars. Take it away, Alex. All right, guys, we're going to be getting to the bottom of this one. We've got two of these boxes of the Quaker granola bars. We're going to take an inside look to see just how much salmonella lurks within these bars. Okay, pretty standard looking. No big pulls yet. All right. Ooh, that's, that's nice, but I'm not seeing a... I'm not seeing anything crazy, but we might actually have a dud of a story here. Um, wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh. Well, that's definitive proof, folks. That is definitive proof. That is a salmonella outbreak. The likes of which we've never seen. Now, we'll take a look at our other box here and... Oh, shoot. I think I left that at Dave's place. I guess that explains a lot, doesn't it? So you're you're telling me your intern is the reason I'm sick right now. <laughs> that I was basically on my deathbed this weekend, this whole week. So not only did you give him seven hundred dollars for, Five I don't know years. what did I what did I see? Let's just summarize his year so far. He saw he got a car wrecked on the highway. And then what did he even do last week? I don't remember. He broke a... Oh, and yeah. He, he broke into somebody's house. I had to bail him out. Week three. This is some, let's just keep going. Week three, he got hit, uh, the president of the company deathly ill. So what are we doing here? I, I got to ask. Do I, need a, do I need to hire you an assistant just so you don't do stupid stuff behind the scenes? The problem is I'm not the one doing stupid stuff. Like, yeah, I, but you're hiring the person that's doing the stupid stuff. I'm... I'm about to throw up right now, live on camera, because of our intern, now that we found out what happened. I thought, I thought our conversation... You didn't think that's the problem. I you did. You didn't think. I did. I the think this might uh, help our legal case that we were trying to build against him, though, guys. I'm I still looking into that lawyer that's situation. True. I think that's a great, a could, great idea. We could probably... <laughs> Let me put a star next to that idea. That's the be first best thing I heard all day. Three stars, actually. Man. One, two, three. Um, Where so, did I find this guy? That's a great question. Probably a Georgia Tech, uh, you know, doing the little photo papers hey, so or whatever. Hey, so far my Georgia Tech hire is pretty good. But he didn't go to Georgia Tech. That's the whole problem. Anyways, let's he, transition a little bit here. He was on campus. <laughs> let's transition a little bit here because we're not just, you know, a one sport company. I know we mentioned that in the first episode, but you can expect 
every sport, every major sport to be talked about. And even more than that, if there's anything big going on in the sports world, you're going to hear it here. We're not going to only talk about football or basketball or baseball. We're talking about football right now because we're going into playoff time. Yeah, but there was a big signing in a different major sport that I feel like we need to talk about. Yeah, it was in the major leagues. Yep, in Major League Baseball, Shohei Otani. And for those of you that aren't familiar, he's one of the top pitchers and top hitters in Major League Baseball. He does both. Which is crazy. It is crazy. To do one of those and be a top five player is just incredible. To do both is unheard of. And at, to do it at a very high level. Very high level. So he signed a 10-year, $700 million contract. That is a lot of money. Largest contract ever in Major League Baseball. Now, in any sports. That's not even the crazy part. 68, get ready for this. So $70 million a year, right? We can do the math. Right. 68 of that 70 million each year is going to be deferred until after the contract. <laughs> yeah. So that means the the Dodgers books, the Los Angeles Dodgers, their books are only going to be $2 million for his contract. Which is crazy. Which doesn't seem very fair. But you know, in, in Major League Baseball, they have um, they have a players union and then they have obviously the owners, right? The so owners, they have yes. collective bargaining agreements, you know, every handful of years or whatever. So all the collective bargaining agreement says is that a player's contract must be the minimum salary is 750,000. So that's how they get around it. There is no rule. There's no rule for how much money you can defer down the road, which I don't mind that there's not a salary cap. Um, what they have in baseball is a luxury tax. So basically, it's supposed to pre- prevent the really, really um, high spending teams from going way overboard. So how it works is this. So let's just say your salary, it's not a salary cap, your luxury threshold is $230 million. Okay. Let's say a team goes over that amount. The first time, they get taxed 20% when they go over it. Okay. If it happens a second time... 30%. And then a third time or more, 50%. Now, let's say they go all the way to 290. So that's 60 million over that. And that's why some of these teams are scared to get there. You're taxed for the first time 80% of that. 80%. Second offense, 90%. Holy man. And you do it a third time or more, 110%. So that means you're paying double for everything you're paying above that amount. If you get that high, you better make sure your team's in a running for a World Series every year. Exactly. So to prevent that, the Dodgers have worked out a way to avoid that and still get some of the best players in baseball, which I think that's where I have the problem. I don't care if there are some teams that are willing to spend more money than others, but you got to hold them accountable. You can't let them have these tax loopholes on top of that. Yeah, it's kind of like cheating in a way but not really not really they're playing by the rules i mean there's a collective bargaining agreement it it says that it's basically allowed but it it, it's kind of like disappointing because then you don't really make the league more competitive because all these good players are going to one team exactly so they after that they went and traded for a pitcher from the the tampa bay rays class now yeah who's one of the best pitchers in baseball and they signed him to a big extension um so it's it's Creating the, the difference between lower spending teams and the Dodgers, it's making it like just Dramatic. astronomical. It's just way too much. Yeah, because in a way, they just picked up two of the best pitchers in the game right now. Yeah. Granted, Otani's not going to play probably pitch until like maybe the end of this year. Probably next that, year for sure. But next yeah. year for sure. Yeah. You know, and then, and but, you know, kind of going off of that a little bit, Dave, you know, the NFL kind of does that too a little bit. They do, and I don't like it in the NFL. I don't either. like it either. You know, you add like, I think Brady was no, really known for that, especially in New England. But, you know, it's kind of disappointing, like, but they never really went out and got players. But Yeah, it, it's the same way for me, like, in the NFL. Team, I don't mind teams spending, getting whatever players they want, but everyone should be playing by the same rules. That's all I care about. Right. You shouldn't be able to push out three fake years on a contract just to squeak under, you know. Under the salary cap. Under the salary cap. Yeah. But then it kind of, well, this contract going up off of that now kind of makes you think, like, well, why did they pay this guy seven hundred million dollars? Well, I could tell you why they paid this guy seven million. This guy, you know, he's his hitting, just his hitting alone, he's averaging over three hundred. Not a lot of great And he has a lot of power too. A lot of power. 
And and for him, it's not as big of a deal because he makes about fifteen million dollars a year in endorsements just off the field. So yeah. it's just crazy. And but, but now you mentioned football too, so let's just transition back into football a little right. bit here because we watched tape on some other games too. We right. wanted to open with the Packers and Bears because we talked so much about those two teams last week. Let's start with Dallas Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills. Um, Dallas is ten and four now. Buffalo's eight and six. What did you see watching that game? What an absolute dud of how the Cowboys played. <laughs> quote unquote America's team, by the way. Yeah, quote unquote America's team. Well, let's go Jerry World. But um it's just the way <laughs> it's just, just the way this team plays on the road is mind boggling to me. Like and it's been like that all year. If you look at their stats at home, they're seven and at home. And they outscored their opponents. 279 points to 108 points at home. That's a huge difference. And then you go you go to a, them on the road, and they're they're four and three on the road, and they get outscored 106 156 points to 152 points. It's like night and day. Complete night and day. That's the, like that's like a 500 football team, a the, below 500 football team. There's two notes I pulled out of that game. There's one note number one is they have a lot of hybrid players, and what I mean by that is. They have a lot of really fast, athletic, like linebackers and defensive ends um, and defensive tackles, but they're not true like run stoppers. No. So when you when you play a physical team like that running back from Buffalo, um, what's his name, James Cook? James Cook. He was running all over that team. He was running wild. And I think part of it is they don't have true run stoppers on that team. They're all hybrid players. That's what I would consider them. I would agree with that 100 percent because like you see this team play at home. And they like, it, it, they just go wild. Like you, they're flying over the ball. The guys are flying in midair. Like, and then you see this team on the road. It's just like, and that's the thing though. When you get into January, December, January, um, you're gonna be playing some cold weather games on mm-hmm. the road, and it's gonna create issues. And that's yeah. what's happening. And the, the, they're lucky right now because the Eagles lost this past week. They did, and we'll get into that here in a second. Last thing with the Cowboys I have is they get out of the run. They give up on the run way too easy. Oh, yeah. Way too early in the game. Early, like late third quarter, they were deep pass, deep pass, deep pass. But I don't know if you watched – obviously you watched the same game film I did, but you know when Dak was playing good, when the Cowboys got on that run, Dak used his legs. He did not use his legs up until that last drive of the game, and they went down and scored. Yep. So got to keep moving he, the ball. He, he's got to be able to really know run with the football. Yep, got to keep and moving And he the did chance. not do that all probably for like uh, three and a half quarters. Quite a bit of the game. So Quite a bit of the you, game. You mentioned the Eagles already, which are a division rival of the Cowboys. What did you see during that game? Because they had a whole <laughs> different thing going on oh, against the Seahawks this week. Oh, man. You know, we talked about the Cowboys putting up a dud, but the Eagles have been putting up a dud for the last three weeks. You know, I don't know. You know, this team was supposed to be a front runner to win the Super Bowl over the Chiefs, but they do not look like that the last three weeks. The biggest thing I see with them is they have a whole body language issue. So they have a lot of their star players. They're just kind of moping around. They're not going after balls. They're just kind of pointing the finger at everybody else. I have, yeah. Um, the other thing I see is they are pressing a little bit too much. Like Jalen Hurts. What did he have? I jotted it down here. He had, he threw a 50-yard pass with like eight minutes left, and they were up by four points. He did not need to force that ball into the end zone. You're at midfield, and you have the lead. Why aren't you just putting the ball down the field seven yards, six yards, and just going down the field like that? I don't understand it. I don't. And you know what? They kind of get away from the run, too, a little bit. You know, like, and you saw when they run with Swift, man, they, they're more efficient. You know, there was the big talk last week that they need to run the ball. And everybody's like, well, well, they pass to win. They pass to get the lead, and they run to win. No, you need to run the ball to to pass. You know, early in the game, they were so efficient. They did a lot of those run-pass options. They got the ball out of Jalen Hurts' hands quick. Second half, they looked like a completely different offense. They tried to throw the ball over the foot. For no reason. They had the lead. They had the lead. They, you know, you let this team in the game. You know, they had no excuse to be in there. But it's like, but, like, well, one thing that popped off, you know, that caught my eye was they're negative seven in turnover differentiation. So this that means that defense does not get turnovers. So they're, they're and they're loose with the football. Too. And they're loose with the football. Jalen, yeah. I didn't realize Jalen Hurts has has twelve interceptions and four fumble losses. 
The fumbles, yeah. And that's just him. Yeah. That's not including anybody else. So uh, we'll yeah. see. Those two teams would be really, really interesting to keep following going forward. And what I want from you guys is let us know in the comments what games or what sports going into next week do you want us to cover? Because we'll cover whatever you want. If there are certain football games that you want covered, we will be glad to do the research and talk about those. Oh, yeah. We're having fun with this, covering as many different big games as we can, kind of setting off, you know, setting up for playoff week. Yeah, and it's going to be a really run. good time and see where teams are going to end up because everybody's kind of going like a roller coaster right now. Right, like teams you thought should win are not winning, and teams that are winning are like, where they come from? <laughs> like, but that's playoff football. You playoff know, playoff I mean? football. You just never know what you're going to get. Your flaws throughout the year in the playoffs always show up. Always show Almost up. Almost always show up. So keep supporting us. We really appreciate all the support. Oh yes, please keep supporting us. There's been such positive support. Keep that going. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family members. And keep giving us feedback because that's what we want. Yeah, we want to keep getting better for you. We enjoy putting on a good show for you. So. Please keep subscribing, and we're, ha- we're really having a lot of fun doing We're this. having a ton of fun. Hopefully, you're having fun watching us. So join us next Friday night at 7 Central when we do the Chew episode. What is it, 4? Ep- episode 4, It is yeah. 4. Yeah. yeah, it is episode 4. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys have a good weekend. Take care.